With the volume and diversity of today's maritime regulatory environment becoming increasingly complex, there's an even greater need for specialist advice in winning the global race against climate change. Law firm HFW is an experienced hand in navigating the challenging straits of compliance and carbon reduction. This is the prime meridian at the Royal Observatory at Greenwich. It's a place where history and science and engineering all come together. It's the line from which all time is measured. But time is running out for all of us to cut carbon emissions if we're going to mitigate the worst of climate change. And it also means huge changes for the shipping industry. In the 1880s, Cutty Sark was the fastest trading ship in the world, capable of topping 17 knots and once returning from Australia to England in just 73 days. But even she was unable to compete with the reliability of steam power, which in turn gave way to oil. Now shipping is facing a fourth propulsion revolution. And that's where the industry is looking at ways to decarbonise shipping and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So for example, by the use of um, autonomous vessels, alternative fuels, and a combination of alternative propulsion. Um, wind assisted propulsion, for example, is making a huge comeback, and which brings us back to the Katisak. Global law firm HFW was founded in 1883 by the Holman shipowning and shipbuilding family to support its shipping, trading and insurance businesses. Since then, HFW has expanded globally and has helped the shipping industry navigate some choppy waters, as it does now, finding its path towards decarbonisation. We certainly need uh, investments in research and development into new technologies, uh, innovation, alternative fuels and ways to make vessels more energy efficient. Above all else, and to tie everything in, we need regulatory intervention with appropriate enforcement and sanctions to enable this transition. Historically, governments didn't pay attention to what fuel drove the propellers of the world's cargo ships, but that is changing fast, and now a vessel can be subject to a perfect storm of complex rules on a single voyage. Which would involve, on the one hand, global regulations that are imposed by MARPOL on the vessel, um, but it will also have to comply with other EU measures, a series of EU measures, including, but not limited to, the EU emissions trading scheme and also fuel EU maritime. But that alone doesn't account for the fact that going forward, other nations and other regions may seek to impose their own emissions regulations. Now just across the River Thames from Greenwich, you can see the financial districts of London and the city. And something that's being talked of more and more these days is ESG, environmental social governance. And the idea is that big business must take its corporate social responsibility seriously or potentially face enormous economic consequences. There will be plenty of Kodak moments along the way, but those will cause much opportunity and also scope for both technical and financial in innovation in this space. The shipping industry will find increasingly that there will be a strong link between what's good for the shipping company itself and its fleet and what's good for the wider environment. Singapore is the world's largest bunkering hub. The Maritime and Port Authority of Singapore is already planning for a decarbonised future, investing 120 million Singapore dollars to establish a global maritime decarbonisation centre. This collaborative initiative with industry stakeholders demonstrates how shipping and logistics can rise to the challenge of decarbonisation. Really, I think it's those companies who see this as a transformative moment, not a moment for small tweaks, but a moment to transform their businesses, to really embed sustainability and decarbonisation all the way through. And as part of that, I think we need to see companies transform the way they work together, because the only way to achieve decarbonisation is through collaboration, and to really have a whole of supply chain solution. Tougher regulation will be required if we want to decarbonise, very simply, because voluntary action will only get you so far. And in the absence of regulation, no one's willing to pay the price that is required in order to decarbonise. 
A century ago, when steam ruled the waves, HFW was there to advise clients on how best to protect their interests. Now, as low-carbon technologies are set to become the new normal, HFW is providing expert advice at a critical and defining moment for the shipping industry. Shipping has been through conflicts. Uh, shipping has been through recessions. Uh, shipping has been through a pandemic. It has survived all of those challenges. Is this the greatest challenge ever? I'm not sure it is. I think for the moment, yes, it will be. I think the biggest difficulty will be for shipping that it is a truly global business and there will be local nuances, particularly in the way in which regulations are interpreted on a global basis. I think that's going to be the greatest difficulty that shipping will have. The Cutty Sark represents the high watermark of the age of sail, but she was eventually sidelined by new, more powerful technologies. Today, ship owners and ship operators need to realise that they are already in a race to embrace the technologies of a decarbonised future, and those who take the best advice are most likely to emerge as winners. <laughs>